good afternoon students we have been discussing about evidences of evolution in that evidences of evolution we are going through comparative anatomy and morphological evidences in the comparative anatomy and morphological evidences we have gone through homologous organs analogous organs and a detailed study on adaptive radiation and we have also discussed about atavism and vestigial organs the remaining is connecting links okay we shall see connecting links under comparative anatomy and morphological evidences most it is fifth one that is connecting links as the name indicates the organisms which are exhibiting the characteristic features of two different groups are known as connecting links once again say, see the statement the organisms which are exhibiting the characters of two different groups are known as connecting links the organisms which are exhibiting the characters of two different groups the organism which are exhibiting the characters of two different groups are known as connecting links okay what are all those connecting links why does act as the connecting link between non living world and living world virus is a connecting link between non living things and living organisms and next one blue green algae blue green algae act as a connecting link between prokaryotes and eukaryotes okay I write all these things. See here, blue green algae. You clean up the connecting link between polyphenols and cyanides. And tenophora, tenophora is the connecting link between radiation. Tenophora is the connecting link between radiation and bilateral. That means the organisms which are exhibiting radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. tenophorans okay flatworms flatworms are the connecting link between diploblastica and triploblastica the organism which possess two germinal layers and the organism which possess three germinal layers okay the flatworms are the connecting links between diploblastic and triploblastic organisms okay Neoplasma. Neoplasma is the connecting link between Annelida and Mollusca. Neoplasma is the connecting link between Annelida and Mollusca. Peripatus. Peripatus is the connecting link between Annelida and Arthropoda. Balanoglossus. Balanoglossus is the connecting link between non-chordates and chordates. Chimera is the connecting link between chondritis and osteichthyes, cartilaginous fishes and bony fishes. 
lacrimalia lacrimalia it is a connecting link between fishes and reptiles it is a coelacanth fish okay and next spinodon spinodon is a connecting link between amphibians and reptiles and ornithorhynchus ornithorhynchus it is a connecting link between and mammals once again i will write this here viruses are the connecting link between non living things viruses are the connecting link between non living things and living organisms okay blue green algae are the connecting link between prokaryotes and prokaryotes and eukaryotes prokaryotes and eukaryotes euglena is a connecting link between plant kingdom and animal kingdom plants and animals fauna and flora and fauna proteospongia the proteospongia is a connecting link between poriferans sponges poriferan and cementirids cementrita corals okay restiofora tinoporans okay these are the connecting link between radiatum and bilateria radially symmetrical organisms and bilaterally symmetrical organisms radiatum and bilateria whereas flatworms are the connecting link between diploblastic organisms diploblastic organisms and triploblastic organisms triploblastic organisms okay now neoplasma neoplasma is the connecting link between anirida and mollusca anirida and mollusca important thing about neoplasma it is acting as a living fossil what is a living fossil the organisms which have undergone very slight evolutionary modifications or they remain or the organisms which have remained unchanged right from the evolution to till now such type of organisms are known as living fossils so neoplasma act as a living fossil once again what is living fossil living fossils are the organisms which have undergone very little evolution undergone very little evolutionary modifications in their morphology or known as living fossils so neoplasma it acts as both connecting link and living fossil periparas is a connecting link between anirida and arthropoda arthropoda belarus process and corno okay it is connecting link between non chordates which belong to hemichordata non chordates and chordates non chordates and chordates chimera is the connecting link between chondrites means cartilaginous fishes and ostichthyes ostichthyes is a bony fishes lacrimalia charme it is a coelacanth fish low protein fish yes? and it is also a living fossil with very less evolutionary changes 
Okay, black material is also a living fossil. It is a connecting link between fishes and reptiles. Okay, spinodon. Spinodon is a connecting link between reptiles and sorry, spinodon is a connecting link between amphibians and reptiles. Spinodon is a connecting link between amphibians and reptiles. And ornithorhynchus is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals. Reptiles and mammals. Okay. What does these connecting links they are explaining? If you observe, for example, Belenoglossus, it is possessing. Certain characters of these non cortex and few characters of cortex. The organism which possesses the characters of two different groups is known as a connecting link and they act as an evidence that the organism, the present day organisms, has evolved from the previous phyla or the previous organisms. Okay, connecting links, most important one. This neoplanum, platymeria, why? Because they are acting as both the connecting links and living fossils. A living fossil is an organism which has undergone very little evolutionary change, or there is no evolutionary change in its morphology, or known as living fossils. Then, what are missing links? We have seen connecting links, and what are missing links? Missing links we are going to study under fossils, okay, under paleontological evidences we are going to study. What is the difference connecting links and missing links is that all these connecting links they are extant organisms, that means they are living organisms, whereas missing links are extinct organisms. The only difference is that both the connecting links and missing links they are exhibiting the characters of two different groups, but Connecting links, the organisms under connecting links they are extant, they are living at present. But whereas missing links, they are completely extinct from, from today's world, they are known as extinct. Then how do you come to know this? By, by fossil, by the uh, evidences of fossils, we can identify these missing links. So with this uh, connecting links, we are done with Evidences from comparative anatomy and morphology. Okay, with these evidences, we are done with comparative anatomy and morphological evidences that is, homologous organs, analogous organs, divergent evolution, convergent evolution, and ataurism. Okay, vestigial organs and connecting in this is. These are all topics we have studied under the heading Evidences under Morphological and Anatomical Evidences. Okay. The next one is Embryological Evidences. Embryological Evidence. Next one it is Embryological Evidence. Next one it is Embryological physical evidence. Second one, evidence. Second one, the second, the second main evidence is under embryological evidences. See here. When we observe the early development of embryos in all the vertebrates, in all the vertebrates, if you observe the early development, the early development of all the vertebrates, 
it includes the following stages like the egg will get fertilized if fertilized egg leads to the formation of a diploid zygote zygote undergoes a series of cleavages and it leads to the formation of undifferentiated ball of cells called morula morula develops into blastula blastula develops into gastrula from gastrula organogenesis develops into gastrula from gastrula organogenesis will take place organogenesis okay if you observe the pattern of development embryonic development either in case of fish or in case of frog or chick or in case of human beings okay the same pattern of evolution we can observe zygote develops into morula morula to blastula blastula to gastrula and then organogenesis will take place the same pattern we can observe even in case of these organisms even it is belonging to pisces amphibian aves and mammalia the pattern of development is same that indicates that we all have a common ancestor is that clear what does this embryological evidence states that we all have evolved from a common ancestor apart from that the father of embryology is father of embryology father of embryology is von bear he proposed the law called bear's law bear's law according to this law according to this law he stated that in the embryonic development the generalized characters will develop first followed by the specialized characters see we can observe if the pattern of development is the same all might have developed into the same type of individual no not like that even though the pattern of development is same they are having some specialization which lead to the evolution of different species so what he is saying that according to von bear in the early development in the embryonic development the generalized characters develop first generalized characters develop first and then followed by specialized characters okay but this law was modified by ernst hackel this law was modified by ernst ernst hackel and he named that as biogenetic law very very important hackel's biogenetic law Hackel's biogenetic law states that very important statement. On the release of phylogeny, Ernst Hackel phylogeny, Ernst Hackel, according to Ernst Hackel. He proposed the law called biogenetic law. This biogenetic law is also called as recapitulation theory. Very very important. Biogenetic law is also known as recapitulation theory. what does this states recapitulation theory or biogenetic law what does it states see the statement it is ontogeny repeats phylogeny what does that statement mean 
Ontogeny repeats Pyrogeny Ontogeny means the life history embryonic development not only embryonic development the complete development of an organism life history the life history of an organism is in correlation with evolutionary history of an organism evolutionary history okay as we are moving from protozoans or coriferans to primates the complexity is increasing even the life history we are seeing there is a simple life in case of coriferans or protozoans whereas complex life where we are moving from protozoa coriferan seedlings etc to primates in the same way say the life history of an individual organism is repeating its phylogeny according to this biogenetic law or recapitulation theory which was proposed by hegel and he stated that ontogeny always repeats phylogeny These are about embryological evidences. Okay, apart from that, if we observe, the shape of the embryos, it is very much similar, even in case of a small fish, which is having gills for respiration, and the early embryos, same shape. in case of amphibians or in case of chick okay the embryo if you observe even in case of fish or amphibian or apes or even in case of human beings also the shape of the fetus or the embryo is the same if you look at these embryos of different vertebrates it indicates that vertebrates it indicates that they all are having a common ancestor okay these are all embryological evidences in this embryological evidence this theory is important ma ernst hegel has proposed this by in this embryological evidence this theory is important ma ernst hegel has proposed this biogenetic law and according to biogenetic law ontogeny repeats phylogeny important statement now the next evidence is that and the third evidence is biochemical evidences biochemical biochemical physiological and even psychological even genetical evidences also biochemical physiological psychological and genetical evidences genetical evidences okay what does it indicate biochemical physiological psychological evidences see the biochemical evidence if you observe the protoplasm the protoplasm or on the cell organelles cell organelles the composition of this protoplasm and the function of cell organelles like nucleus mitochondria body complex 
ribosomes all are similar right from protozoans to polyphenol to the highly evolved primates if we are primates if we are the nucleus mitochondria endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex ribosomes endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex ribosomes the function of all these cell organelles is similar right from protozoa polyphera ciliata hemicortex cordex species all these organisms the function of all these cell organelles is the same and the composition of protoplasm is also same in all the living organisms and next and if we observe the reserve food material the source of the source of reserve food material in all invertebrates in all invertebrates is the source of reserve food material in all invertebrates is arginine phosphate arginine phosphate whereas the reserve food material in case of all vertebrates it is creatine phosphate creatine phosphate right from fishes to mammalia the reserve source of earth, sorry the reserve source of energy the reserve source of energy is arginine phosphate and here in case of vertebrates it is creatine phosphate we have studied about creatine phosphate See, during muscle contraction, the immediate donor of phosphate to the ADP, which will help in production of ATP, is creatine phosphate. Okay, and if you observe enzymes, certain enzymes like amylase and trypsin. amylase trypsin see these are primitive most enzymes amylase will help in digestion of starch whereas trypsin will help in digestion of proteins it is a proteolytic enzyme proteolytic enzyme that means in any of the organism if you take the trypsin the function of trypsin is same it is helpful in digestion of proteins whereas in case of amylase it is also help it is helpful in digestion of starch whether it may be in case of amphibians or in case of birds or in case of mammals the function of amylase is same that it is helpful in breakdown of starch okay so it indicates that we have been evolved from our primitive organisms apart from in this biochemical evidences and physiological cytological evidences in the certain hormones the function of hormones is also same in different groups the function of hormones is also same in different groups for example tyrosine tyrosine which is present which is produced by thyroid gland helpful in metabolism metabolism okay if the same thyroxine which is produced in human beings in mammals is injected to tadpole larva tadpole larva of fishes tadpole larva of fishes it is sorry tadpole larva of amphibians frog 
it is helpful in metamorphosis it will help a larva will be metamorphosis into adult frog okay so that means even though it is produced in mammals when it is injected to the amphibians the function of trypsin is same, sorry the function of tyrosin is same it is helpful in the metabolic activity and it is helpful in metamorphosis of this tadpole larva okay is that clear these are all the evidences in the physiological and psychological evidence one more that is regarding uh, waste materials regarding nitrogenous waste nitrogenous waste if you observe the nitrogenous waste in case of a most of the fishes in fishes the nitrogenous waste is ammonia the adult amphibians frogs amphibians excrete urea but if you observe the tadpole larva if you observe the tadpole larva adult frog excrete urea tadpole larva excrete ammonia it indicates that the amphibians are evolved from these fishes okay and next in birds the early developmental stages of birds they excrete ammonium they excrete ammonium and then they will shift to their nitrogenous waste material urea and then the adult will excrete uric acid even in human beings also ammonia is produced which is converted into urea in liver okay by ornithine okay so these nitrogenous waste when we uh, take an analysis of this nitrogenous waste they also indicate that we have evolved from those organisms which are we have evolved from the primitive this nitrogenous waste they also indicates that we have evolved from those organisms which are we have evolved from the primitive organisms okay these are all the differences and the biochemical physiological psychological and one example regarding genetical evidences what are those genetical evidences we know that genetic code is universal it's a no genetic code is universal AUG codes for methionine even in bacteria or in plants or in case of animals in any of the living organisms AUG means it will codes for methionine AUG codes for methionine whereas GUG GUG codes for glutamic acid glutamic acid whereas GAG codes for valine okay whether AUG in case of bacteria or in case of human beings or in case of plants AUG will codes only for the amino acid methionine that's what how we what will say genetic codes are universal whatever may be the organism their function is same okay these are the evidences under biochemical physiological psychological and genetical evidences the next one paleontological evidences the next evidence is that okay before okay before going into paleontological evidences we shall see the paleontological evidence the fourth one it is paleontological evidences paleontological evidences Thank you. 
Paleontological Evidences Paleontology The study of fossils is known as Paleontology Okay The study about plant fossils is known as Paleo And the study about Animal fossils is known as Paleozoology. The study about the study about fossils is known as paleontology. The study about fossils is known as paleontology, whereas the study about plant fossils, the study about plant fossils is known as paleobotany. 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 Whereas animal fossils. Animal fossils is known as paleozoology. Okay. Few memory points regarding this paleontology. The father of paleontology. Father of paleontology. Father of paleontology. is Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo da Vinci whereas father of modern paleontology father of modern paleontology is George Cuvier he is the one who has talked about theory of catastrophism we have studied theory of catastrophism was given by George Cuvier. He is the father of modern paleontology. And father of Indian paleontology, or the person who is known in Indian paleontology is Deepal Sahib. Okay. Few points regarding paleontology. And the persons who have defined fossils. Okay, what are fossils? Means the remains of past life. The remnants of past life are known as past life. The remnants of past life are known as fossils. The remains of past life which were buried under earth crust in the sedimentary rocks. He is known as a fossil. Lyell has described this fossils. Okay? And definition of fossils in here, one more important question. The remains of past life. Buried under earth crust or on sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are known as fossils. These fossils can be obtained in the form of impressions. Footprints or imprints, casts and molds. Okay, and in the form of skeletons or in the form of shells. Okay, either in the form of an impression or in the form of skeleton bones or shells or casts or molds which are buried. 
in a rock ridge, in a sedimentary rocks. Okay, all those are known as fossils. The age of the fossil is determined by carbon dating method. The age of the fossil. Age of the fossil. Age of fossils is determined by carbon dating method. Okay, by using carbon dating method, C14 will be reduced to N14. Okay, and even by using uranium 235, okay, which is getting decomposed into lead. Okay, the, by counting the, by estimating the percentage of lead, the age of the fossil can be determined. Apart from that, the most accurate method of determining the age of the fossil is ESR, electron spin resonance technique. The most accurate method, the most accurate method of determining the age of the fossil is ESR, electron spin resonance. Electron spin resonance technique. By using this electron spin resonance technique, the age of the fossil can be determined. In this process, we will come across the missing links. What we have discussed, connecting links are the group, the organisms which are having the characteristic features of two different groups are known as connecting links. Whereas missing links are also possessing the characteristic features of two different groups but they are completely extinct. What are those species? Ichthyostiga. Ichthyostiga. We all know ichthyo. The root word ichthyo means fish. Ichthyology, study of fishes. Ichthyostiga. And Cymuria. Cymuria. Archaeopteryx, very very important. Archaeopteryx. Okay. So let's see here. Ichthyostiga is the missing link. What we are studying is the missing links. Missing links. Ichthyostiga is the missing link between fishes and Amphibians. Cymuria is the missing link between amphibians and reptiles. Amphibians and reptiles. Whereas Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx is the missing link between reptiles and birds. We have a short discussion about this. Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx, it is even though it is a reptile, it is exhibiting certain characters of reptiles and few characters of birds. Okay, and its impression was identified. Archaeopteryx. What are the characters that are reptilian characters and avian characters of Archaeopteryx species? Species. Archaeopteryx many times asked in different exams. It is exhibiting the characters of both reptiles and birds. And what are the reptilian characters and what are the avian characters? Reptilian characters and Avian characters. 
characters. Union characters of archaeopteryx. Okay. Presence of solid bones. Whereas in case of caves, pneumatic bones should be present, but it is having solid bone. And presence of teeth. Teeth are present in case of reptiles. Okay. And presence of claws on the limbs. Presence of claws on the limbs. These are all certain reptilian characters. They are not an avian characters. The first one, presence of feathers. Presence of feathers is an unique characters of yams. But we have the archaeopteryx is processing feathers but which are very undeveloped feathers are there. And presence of beak. Beak, uh, presence of a jaw is modi modified into beak. It is a character of a bird. And presence of sternum. Keel shaped sternum. Keel of sternum. These are the characters of apes. As the organism which is having the characters of two different groups, it is acting as a link between two different groups, but it is not ex uh, extant. It is completely extinct. So we are studying under the paleontological evidence. It is a, acting as a missing link between. Reptilia and apes. Okay. These are evidences under paleontology. Okay. And apart from this, The next evidence is the biogeographical evidences. What is biogeography? The pattern of distribution of different animals and plants on different geographical areas is known as biogeography. The study of distribution of plants and animals on different regions of earth is known as biogeography. So the last evidences are biogeographical evidences. The last evidence, the fifth one, it is biogeographical evidence. Biogeographical evidences. The study of the pattern of distribution of different animals and plants. The study of pattern of distribution of different plants and animals on earth is known as Biogeography. Okay. Here we are going to discuss about geological time scale. What does geological time scale indicate? That geological time scale indicates regarding the presence of different organisms at different strata of earth. What is strata? Means earth layers. Okay. The presence of different organisms at different earth or soil layers indicates this geological time scale. At which geological time period, which type of organisms were present, we can analyze by going through geological time scale. Okay. In this geographical evidences, we will come across with the discontinuous distribution and continuous distribution. Discontinuous and continuous distribution. What is this discontinuous and continuous distribution? See, when closely related organisms or when closely related genera 
were confined to different geographical regions. Such type of distribution is known as discontinuous distribution or allopatric speciation. Discontinuous discontinuous distribution. This discontinuous distribution is known as allopat allopatric speciation. Allopat allopatric speciation. Important for competitive exams. Okay. Discontinuous distribution or allopatric speciation means when Closely related organisms or when closely related species or when closely related genera are distributed at different geographical areas are at different geographical areas okay what does it mean say for example african lung cigar diploid fishes are there these diploid fishes act as a connecting link between diploid fishes act as a connecting link between fishes and amphibians so these fishes diploid fishes are uncles of amphibians uncles of amphibians they act as a connecting link between fishes and amphibians okay when you observe these diploid fishes And observe these diploid fishes. See here, Protopterus, Protopterus, okay, which is African lungfish. African, in case of ratted birds, all these ratted birds are flightless birds. These are these are flightless birds. For example, kiwi belongs to New Zealand. Kiwi in New Zealand. In New Zealand. Okay, ostrich. Africa. Africa. Ria. South America. Okay. Emu. And Kosovari. All these are present in Australia. All these are practical birds, they are flightless birds, but they are present in different geographical areas New Zealand, Africa, South America, and Australia. Okay? The organisms which are closely related but distributed in different geographical areas, okay, they are explaining this discontinuous distribution or Allopatric speciation, which are having the same common origin, but they are separated. How they are separated? What is the continental drift? We shall see in the next class.